you've probably owned this commercial building or residential building for a while, and you're getting frustrated because it's not generating the income it should be generating. In fact, you might be losing money. There's some unforeseeable expenses coming up. You need to do some extra work. You don't know what to do. The first thing people think of, let's just sell it, give someone else a problem. What I keep saying, the reason you want to sell a property is probably the reason why buyers don't want to buy it. Think of that. So if you, whatever situation, you need to make it attractive. So you're getting a good return. And if you want to sell it, you sell it at a better price or retain it, get a higher income. The question is, what do you do? It depends on whether it's a short term or long term. So in the short term, you can do things, have long term plans. So have a plan for your property. Timing is very important. And the most important aspect of this, I will cover at the end of this video. It's important to know what was going on in the area. What's changing? Demographics changing, it's becoming younger, older, wealthier, facilities changing, transport links, new roadway, infrastructure. So taking all these into consideration, you can look at the options. Maybe you can furbish it for another market. Example, upgrading it, changing things to appeal to different market. Then you may look at development. For example, years ago, I, I, tra I transformed old industrial buildings into residential retail. Other things could be I've done in the past, uh, transporting office buildings into boarding houses, changed uh, motels into backpackers, motels into educational establishments, childcare centers, 55's developments. There's various scenarios, depending on what it is. Now, it depends on what you, how much finance you've got available and whether you, if you redevelop it, you get the return you want. Now, an example would be fire or some sort of order from the council. They could be very critical to your bottom line. I've seen them cost up to a th of the value of the building. But if you were to do that, undertake those developments to upgrade them to certain new fire order introduced, it may take you many years before you start making a positive return. What do you do? Do you do the work and you retain the same sort of tenancies or do you go for a new market? Sometimes it's difficult to get a new market. You may have to completely gut it and it's going to cost a lot more money. And you may be looking at things like residential apartments, a retail component on the ground floor. Things could be rebranding them, like you may have a situation when I did years ago, I had a, play, a building which was mainly fashion. People, fashion people were moving out of the area. So we, we've got more creative people in there. So we encourage more creative people in there like architects and artists and designers and that sort of thing. Obviously, things are changing now. You've got the changes with people working from home or that. Maybe design a residential property with a component of offices, so separate offices for the residential parts or separate retail so they can still basically work on their own premises, just a separate entrance or something like that. You think other things like uh, renovating the common areas, uh, the lobby, the hallways, amenities, to create a more modern, more inviting environment for tenants. They also add amenities which don't exist, for like a fitness center, community room, rooftop terrace, to enhance the appeal of a building. Maybe something that will attract more a younger type of a clientele in the high tech world or whatever it may be. Introducing energy efficient measures. So upgrading the systems, installing energy efficient lighting, the insulation, reduce operating costs to attract environmentally conscious tenants, enhancing the curb appeal, improving landscaping, outdoor seating areas, make it more attractive in that way. And then the most important thing is to ensure that you've got some plan. Now, unfortunately, I found that most landlords don't plan their leases. They just, a new tenant comes up, they just offer them a three, six year lease, and that's it. And what you find is that when it comes to doing something with the property, they may have 10 tenants, for example. Eight tenants may have one or two years to go, but there's two other tenants have got six year leases. So, technically speaking, unless you pay them out, you can't do anything major to the property until those tenancies. Are finished. So what you can 
space where you may lose tenancies, those the short leases, a period of time, because you can't renew longer leases to fit in with the six-year period for the, the longest-serving tenancies. You may short-term leases, things like pop-up shops, some sort of incentives for short leases like that. Whatever you do, I mentioned before, it's important that all the leases are in sync. That is quick. So that you can time your leases, the termination of leases, at a certain date. The longest lease of God is coming up in four years' time. So plan ahead a four-year period to ensure the building will be back in possession so you can take the work you want to do. Because if you've got one tenant for a longer time, they can hold your ransom, excessive payout, payout may be required, asking to leave, or some sort of incentive. Make that sure things in place and ensure your leases are correct. Go to the I's, cross the T's to ensure those leases don't cause problems when it comes to that date where you want to all the tenants out and to undertake your work. What do your comments? What measures you can place to upgrade your building to get more income out of your property? This is Conta Cedis from CC Properties.